Hello and welcome back. First of all, thank you all for your support. I was surprised to see people subscribe to my channel, despite the fact I didn't upload anything for almost a year. And in this short intro, I want just to explain just a little bit uh, what happened and what's gonna be next. So, a year ago, as you know, Russia started a full-scale war against Ukraine. And even I'm not in Ukraine, I'm not in Russia, I have dear friends of mine in Ukraine and I was worried about them a lot. And I also have family and I have close friends in Russia. And my friend's family was against it against this war and I was also worried about their safety so as you imagine it totally killed my mood to do anything uh, like modeling filming anything I was so overwhelmed with everything that happened and I was busy with trying to help my friends trying to help my family everyone so yeah it was a hard time Luckily, thank God, all my friends are safe and my family okay. So when things, things calm down, I had another stuff unfortunate to do. There was also a time when I was super sick. And on and on and on, there always something. But happily, now I have much more time. And I also have my module back, so I have plans for changing and improving my content. Um, I don't want to say right now what, what exactly I'm gonna do, um, but you will see. I just want to make it a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more interesting, so it will happen soon. I still have another old project of uh, another old model that I wanted to finish it was started and like I stopped half of it so it half filmed so I will finish it hopefully and the next project after it will be totally new so uh, yeah um, I just don't want to take too much time from this already long video I hope you will like it thank you all and see you soon Okay, so we have a huge carton box with very nice box art, level 5 difficult, 132 scale, let's dig in. I'm starting with sending all raised parts from instrument panel, as I gonna use photo edge set from Edward later. Cockpit assembly is quite straightforward. Just don't rush and dry fit everything. After finishing the main assembly, I'm priming the cockpit with Mr. Surface Black. Then I'm covering all surfaces with AK polished aluminium. It will be used for later chipping, because nothing better for chips than real chips. Most important for this technique is to cover your paint with two thin layers of chipping fluid. For main interior color I use acrylic from Ammonique because it's easier to chip water-based acrylic than lacquers. 
and also because I had this paint already. I let the paint dry a bit, then I used water to activate chipping fluid and scratch the surface with a toothpick and stiff brush to achieve a realistic chipping effect. Next step, I secured the paint job with a flat varnish and began to glue the photo edge with PVA glue. You can use CA, but for big parts I prefer PVA as it gives me much more working time to adjust everything properly. As you already noticed, PE parts have slightly different color tone, so I used high-tech technology to fix it. In other words, I painted with a paintbrush and the same color that I used for an interior. And it's easier than it looks. For the leather back of the seat, I used good old contrast technique. First, painted dark base color. And with each layer, I added more and more of brighter color, covering less and less surface. And last layer was pure bright color, mostly for scratches. For finishing touch and for blend all colors together, I used highly diluted base dark color as a filter. Simple but effective method. Then I secured my work with matte varnish and used a mere black panel liner as wash to increase shadows and to give it more three-dimensional look. Any extra wash was carefully blended with paintbrush with a bit of VMS weathering carrier. I am applying gloss varnish onto the instrument to restore the glass effect. I could cover it before with masks, but I found this way just easier. I'm always secure nose weight with PVA glue as much more flexible than regular CA.
First unpleasant surprise in this model was the gun bay covers. They were far, far from a good fit. So instead of just removing guns, as I saw just now, I went a different way. I sanded down the raised parts inside the covers and it actually helped. Kinda. Of. I still got some gaps that I filled later. I forgot to drill holes on upside the part of the wings, so I used flashlight trick to find the right spot. All gaps at any place were filled with black CA mixed with VMS glue filler. This mix will not shrink and also cures super fast. After sanding, I just described pattern lines with scribing tool and so. One of the biggest issues of this kit is it has almost no rivets, so I tried to fix it with my Galaxy model riveting tool. It was also my first time making so many rivets for one model. I tried several ways to do it, but in the end I found out that for me the easiest way to do it is to draw guidelines and then freehandly do the riveting. I can't say I did it perfectly, but overall I like the result and also I gained a lot of experience.
Ok, so engine and the rest of the build were very straightforward, so let me speed it up a little. To make the clear part shinier, I dipped in into Gaussian agent from AK and let it dry overnight. See? Nice and shiny. As always, I started the painting process of this priming with my favorite Mr. Surface Grey. Primer also revealed some imperfections that I fixed before moving on. I decided to paint the landing gear first, which I did with a little mistake, as the inside part of the wheel must be black, but who did not mistake? Clearly the one who read instructions better than me. For the chrome part I used new AK liquid chrome and I love it so much. Super easy to applicate and the result is great. For painting the lower part, I used water-based acrylic, so I built color slowly, building it up 
with thin layers of paint and drying each one with airbrush. Then I used highly diluted Tamiya not to black color to make post shading on panel lines. I think next time I'll add some brown color for more vibrant look. Next step was very similar but with a white paint sprayed in the center of each panel. After that, painting was very repeating, just with different colors, so I'll keep it quiet until weathering.
After I covered the whole model with gloss varnish, I realized my huge mistake. I totally forgot to make metallic undercover for the chipping effect. So I tried old school sponge method. And it worked. Certainly not in every place. Some chips are ugly, but it will do. As you can see, kit decals are quite thick, but it's easy to deal with. To do so, I coated decals with two layers of gloss varnish, let it dry and then carefully wet sanded it with 2000 sand sponge. Super easy and improved decal looks drastically. Bosch is one of my favorite steps. And this time it was also an easy one. I wanted to achieve more dirty look, so I just covered the whole model with dark brown wash and after it was dry, wiped it with paper cloth and cotton swab. Unwrapping canopy is so satisfying, but also scary. But what a relief, it turned out great. To enhance some shadows and panel lines, I used raw amber oil paint. This process might look scary, but easy and chill. My only recommendation to work on small squares. I'm applying paint in small portions and then blending it bit with a dry soft brush. All extra paint, all mistakes, I clean with cotton swab slightly moisturized with white spirit. Last but not least, I painted rockets and wooden pylons. Can I say it pylons? Anyway, for them I use this orange leather mix as base color and rockets painted with regular field grey.
to achieve wood texture, I use same raw amber oil color, apply it on painted parts and just plate it with my trusty saw brush until I found it good enough. Lights were painted with AK clear colors. And the Z model was finished. What do you say? With all of fitting issues and other minor problems, I liked how it turned on. An experience I gained on the way. Thank you for watching and see you next time.